Hello. Good evening, everyone. Hopefully, I'm not standing in between you and dinner this evening. But I'm really excited to be here to talk to you all about the SMB financial services landscape and some of the top projects we are seeing from our customers. My name is Ozioma Uzegu, and I'm a principal solution architect at AWS. I'm based out in our offices in London, where I work with financial services customers. And I'm really excited to be here to talk to you all about some of the things we are seeing in the field and some of the projects driving a lot of impact for our customers. So a quick question, how many of you here are working in financial services? Oh, nice. Cool. So, we typically define financial services customers as those that directly or indirectly facilitate the movement of capital within the global financial system. And in AWS, we group these customers into four different verticals, your banking, capital market, insurance, and payment. Specifically for small and medium scale businesses, especially for banking, we are seeing customers providing credit and loan services targeted to different industries. These are your tier two and tier three banks, providing credit and loan services to your agriculture, your farmers, or potentially targeting property um, developers as well. Capital markets make up the majority of the customers we work with, and these are customers that are involved in trading, providing value-added services to financial data, or help tier one and tier two companies provide the regulatory requirements when it comes to reporting trades within the financial market. And for insurance and payment, we see these customers disrupting as well, providing digital solutions to help transform the insurance and payment space. But these customers face a number of challenges, and I think it's really around some of the risk and regulatory requirements we see always changing. For example, in Europe, you have the DORA coming into play, um, and the same as well across the globe. Customers have high expectation on these financial services customers, especially those that provide B2C services, those that provide trading services, um, provide mobile app to do CFD trading, for example, or customers that also provide payment services. Their customers have high expectation to make sure that they are providing a resilient and agile service as well. But the majority of the challenge we've seen these customers face is really balancing what they do on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of keeping the lights on and driving innovation. Given the small size of these companies and given the, the competition in scale between the tier one companies and these small and medium scale businesses, driving innovation is a problem. And this is really why I want to take you through some of the projects we've worked with some of these customers and some of the services that these customers have adopted of AWS to help them transform and move a bit faster. And I'll start with the first one. I'll cover three, and I'll start with the first one, customer experience transformation. We are seeing financial services customers use data to gain holistic understanding of their customer. And this is really around how do we contextualize and provide personalized services to our downstream customers. And again, customers want to reach our financial services customers through different channels, whether it's call center, whether it's email, whether it's even WhatsApp these days as well. They want to have different channels to be able to reach these customers. And that's why we're seeing a lot of our customers invest in what we call the omni-channel customer experience. So what is this all about? It's all about being able, as a financial services um, company, providing different channels for your customers to interact with you so that you can understand the profile of the customer and begin to offer personalized services and recommendations to those customers. And there are three key things we work with them on, typically for customers that want to build this platform. So the first is around single sign-on. They want to be able to provide, leverage the same credentials to log into different systems provided by the financial services customer. The next is around contact center. Their customers have demand around how do we transform the way we contact you and your agent to solve our problems. And we are seeing customers adopt Amazon Connect to be able to transform their contact center. You've seen a lot of the announcement this morning from Adam around Amazon Q support for Amazon Connect, and we'll keep innovating in that space as well. 
And finally, the analytics part. This is where customers leverage all that data using services like SageMaker and Personalize to be able to offer bespoke services to their downstream customer based on recommendations as well. So that's for omnichannel customer experience. Another area we are seeing our customers invest in, especially capital markets, which make up the majority of the customer we work with in the SMB space, is really ingesting and analyzing financial data. There are four typical use cases we are seeing for financial market data. The first is for financial trading, so being able to leverage data either for real-time trading, algorithmic trading, or high-frequency trading as well. We are seeing our customers also play in the risk assessment space, being able to leverage financial market data for risk assessment to understand the risk profile of a portfolio and be able to recommend the trades that needs to carry on as well. Our customers are using financial market data to do trade reporting. So some customers specialize in helping the tier one and tier two banks and other investment banks to report the trades that have happened within the financial market. And finally, market surveillance as well. So this is more to really detect fraud within the financial market or potentially also insider trading, for example. We see customers specializing in that as well. So what have we done in AWS to help customers address these different use cases? I will start with injection. I think it really starts with ingesting the financial market data either from directly from the exchanges or potentially from market data providers. And there are typically three classes of data we see customers ingest. The real-time market data, the historical market data. But over time, we've seen customers also begin to think about alternative data, like, for example, environmental, social, and government data to be able to build sustainable portfolios for their business. But irrespective of the type of data you are looking at ingesting, we have worked over the years to make it easy for customers to bring this data into AWS to analyze and address your use case. For example, with AWS Private Link, we've partnered with providers like Bloomberg to, to build Bloomberg BPI. This enables you to ingest data from Bloomberg using the private connectivity into your AWS VPC leveraging the technology called Private Link, which provides a secure connection using AWS Private Network to ingest data from Bloomberg into your VPC. We also have options where we've worked with companies like Refinitiv, Nasdaq, to make it easy for you to ingest data through services like Internet Gateway and NAT Gateway. But there are also other options, especially for historical data. So we've worked with providers as well, like NYSC and Bloomberg, to enable them to drop data into your S3 bucket. If you have not heard about AWS Data Exchange, I'll recommend you have a look at it today. It's basically a marketplace where financial data providers make it easy for consumers to ingest financial data. And this is either putting the data in your S3 bucket or sharing a Redshift table with you as well or providing a catalog for the data. We have also noticed a lot of financial services customers using Snowflake to provide the market data. And recently, we announced in preview the support of running Snowflake SQL queries from AWS Glue. So AWS Glue is a data transformation service we also have on AWS. So when it comes to ingestion, customers have a number of options. And I think, but it doesn't stop there. The first step is to ingest the data. But when you ingest the data, you need to analyze it. And that's why we typically see financial services customers build market data pipelines that starts with the ingestion we talked about, being able to move in historical, real-time, or alternative data sources using some of the options we just talked about, but then move on to transform that data with services like AWS Glue, but we are also seeing a lot of customers begin to think about how can they leverage workflow orchestration services, especially for complex data transformation. So using serverless services like step function that can help you to define the steps of how your data is going to be transformed, or services like 
Amazon manage workflow for Apache Airflow. And then it comes to the analytics and machine learning. So being able to provide the transformed data to different stakeholders within the financial services business, whether it's for traders or whether it's for risk managers or potentially for the data science team as well. In fact, one of our customers called Validus have done some good work in this space. And you can hit the QR code there to see the blog we publish with them as well. So they provide risk assessment and portfolio assessment for customers. And they've been able to leverage Bloomberg B pipe to ingest data into AWS and use that to analyze risk and portfolio analysis as well. The third projects we are also beginning to work with our customers. This is still early days, but we are already seeing a lot of productivity and efficiency gains from our customers leveraging generative AI within the financial services space. And typically, these are the three key use cases we are seeing at the moment from our customers when it comes to generative AI for financial services. So the first one is around how do you improve internal and external customer experience? So if you think about a typical company, I would say about 80 to 90% of your data is unstructured. But what generative AI promises is to be able to unlock that unstructured data for things like making it easy for you to search, to summarize, for companies that operate a global operation, do language translation to be able to provide things like your investment analysis or your investment research in various languages, and also Q&A as well. We're also seeing generative AI used to really improve the efficiency of knowledge workers and to automate processes. And I think if you think about an insurance company, they need to generate an insurance policy, um, or you need to generate a loan document, for example, for a bank. Document generation is becoming a trend leveraging generative AI to be able to generate draft documents that you can then optimize for your customers as well. And if you listen to the keynote this morning, Andy announced the support for Amazon, the general availability of Amazon Bedrock agents. And this is what we're, going to, we're seeing financial services customers who use to automate workflows. If you think about when an insurance claim comes through, what are all the processes that go through to be able to process that claim to say whether this is a valid claim or not. And the same applies to loan as well. When a customer applies for a loan, what are the processes that go through to be able to do that? And we've seen customers leverage things like agents when it comes to generative AI to automate, to automate that. And finally, product innovation. We're seeing a lot of innovation um, Wealth, wealth management companies building personalized financial advisors for customers, and also on-demand structured data analysis as well. Still early days, but what we typically see is really that whole essence of a digital assistant, and that's kind of what this could look like. So leveraging all the data you've gathered over the years, whether it's your internal data, or external data sources, or potentially even social, social um, data sources as well to ingest things like news, financial news, and financial articles to be able to offer differentiated generative services like doing question and answer, doing summarization, understanding market insights, and being able to respond to your customer needs depending on what you are seeing out there with, with, your, with your social data. So again, at, at, at AWS, we are making this easy for customers to get on with building generative AI applications with the launch of today of Amazon Q. So if you think about that central digital assistant that will enable you to ingest data from different sources, that is what Amazon Q will really help you to achieve, connecting it to different data sources to help you address various use cases as well. And just to summarize, I've talked about the three key projects that we are seeing from our financial services customers. 
But we also have number four and five, which I haven't covered. But just to quickly summarize those for you as well. So, one of the requirements we are seeing from our customers is around due diligence analysis. If you have been in that space where you provide a service to another company or you provide a service that is regulatory, that has some regulatory and compliance requirements, you typically need to go through what we, what we call the due diligence requirement, whether a checklist, whether an assessment, or as the case may be. We are seeing customers use AWS to help justify the resilience of their financial applications. In 2021, we announced the Resilience Hub. So the Resilience Hub is basically a service that enables you to define, to validate, and to also measure the resilience of your application from things like downtimes that could be caused by your application or your infrastructure or operational issue. And regulators love this because this gives them confidence that you are implementing measures to measure the resiliency of your application and making sure that you are building resilience architecture to make sure your application is up and running as well. So if you haven't seen that, I will recommend you have a look at AWS Resilience Hub. It's a service that will help you to make sure that you are keeping an eye on the resilience of the application. Again, security is always number one priority for a lot of customers. And we have also seen customers leverage AWS to set up their secure foundation. We are doing a lot of projects with customers on landing zone and control tower. And again, I will recommend everyone in the house as well, remember that security is always the job zero, and you are thinking that at the get-go and not as an afterthought. Just to conclude, I have a number of resources here as well to help you learn a bit more about some of the concepts I've talked about today. We have a number of case studies from our financial services customers, which kind of talks about some of the things I discussed today and how they are leveraging those technologies to transform their businesses. If you haven't seen the AWS Com Connected Community, it's a hub for our SMB customers where we share package solutions and also information about events and resources to help SMB customers to transform their businesses as well. I will give you some time to take the picture. It looks like you wanna, you wanna quickly do that. And also, I've also included there the blog we wrote together with one of our customers, Validos, where we looked at how can you seamlessly ingest financial market data into AWS and how can you transform that as well. If you have not seen this, we are actually running a treasure hunt for SMB customers. So you have a chance to win some cool prizes as well. So I recommend scan this QR code. It's going to ask you for a, a word, a secret word. The secret word is landscape. So make sure you use the right secret word. It's just landscape. Um, and once you use that, you stand the opportunity to get some prizes um, in the SMB kiosk at the back as well. So, thank you so much for joining the session today. And please do remember to complete the session survey. Really important for us to see how this session went for you and areas we can improve as well. But thank you so much for, for, for listening. You can reach me on any of my socials. But otherwise, enjoy this evening and the rest of your events as well. Thank you.